Church, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. series titled Christ is greater. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Christ is greater. I think we just proved that by saying our hallelujahs belong to him. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Somebody in here knows that the Lord Jesus Christ, he is greater. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You missed your chance to put your hands together one more time. Amen. And just simply say that the Lord is greater. Amen. You can't praise any other God like you just praised him. There is none other but our Savior. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hebrews, the 13th chapter. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 16. And it reads... But do not, but to do good and to communicate, forget not. For such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Amen. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. As they that must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable to you. Then the writer says, pray for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's, that should be the, the, the story and the, the, the message of the church as we uh, are in these last days. Simply pray for us. For we trust we have a good conscience. That means we've done everything we're supposed to do. Amen. In all things, willing to live honestly. But I beseech you, the rather, to do this, that I may be restored to you sooner. Yeah. Now, the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. That great shepherd of the sheep. Uh -huh. yes, through the blood of the everlasting yeah. covenant. Uh -huh. Make you perfect. Yes. In every yes. good work yes. to do his will. Yes. Working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. Hallelujah. Yes. Through Jesus Christ. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Yes. Then he closes. I got to give you a P.S. He says, and I beseech you, brethren, yes. suffer the word of exhortation. For I have written a letter unto you, a few words, in a few words. Know ye that our brother Timothy is set at liberty, yes. with whom if, if he comes shortly, I will see you. Salute all them that have the rule over you, and all the saints, they of Italy, salute you. Grace be with you all. Amen. 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 You may be seated in his presence, and we know God's word is already blessed. If I were to give this, this would be part two of last week's sermon, a spiritual study guide. Last week was a spiritual study guide for the believer. And this week on church anniversary is a spiritual study guide for the church. If you all will pray with me for just a little while, we will hear what heaven wants to say to us today. Lord, we need to hear from you. Amen. We need a word from you. Yes. If we don't hear from you, what will we do? Yes. Wanting you more each day yes. to show us your perfect way. There is no other way that we can live. Yes. Lord, destruction is now in view. And it seems like man has forgotten all about you. Yes. P 
People are dying and children are crying. They are so lost without you. But you said, if we would seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, you promised you would heal our land. And Father, you can. We need to hear from you right now, Lord. Speak a word, speak a word in this place, for this time, for this season, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Spiritual study guide for the believer. I have to admit to you that I made the same mistake again that I did last year about this time. I have to admit to you that all of you who are lovers of fall and you are, there just went, amen, you are uh, lovers of uh, all the beautiful colors and the pumpkin and, the, and the, the spice and all that stuff that I see all of y'all posting. Well, I love the colors, amen. And I love the pumpkin and I love the candy and I love some of the festivities, but I don't love this weather changing back and forth and all this dreariness and it, my bones hurt. My head has been stopped up. It would get unstopped and stopped back and back up. And so I have to admit to you, I made a mistake. I got to had a change in the weather and I got a little bit under the weather and I told you I slept in the air conditioned while I was out of town and I ended up a wreck of a mess. My head, as my mom used to say, my head didn't even feel like it was my own. And they gave me an antibiotic and I got to feeling better after three or four days and I made the mistake of not finishing off the antibiotic. And I got a reset. So I don't like fall. I'm blaming it on fall. <laughs> the moral of the story is this, saints. God's word is our spiritual medicine. When we take just enough of it to make us feel better on Sunday, but then we don't have any more on Monday or Tuesday, or Wednesday or, or Thursday or we, we just get enough of it here and there as we need it it doesn't fully help us Amen. like it can Amen. Amen I wondered how the Lord was going to bring that around but it is very very simple the word of God is a medicine there is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole his name is Jesus the Christ, and his word is our very lives. It is our medicine. Amen. As I looked at this, uh, I reminded of God's word and its ability to address the comprehensive issues of life. If you remember just a few weeks ago, we, or a few months ago, literally, we, we said we got issues. We've got issues. Yeah, we do. We We've got them, and God's word knows how to handle those issues. I saw some hands, amen. I'll raise mine with you. I, I, I've got issues, but here's what I found out. When I take those issues and shine the light of God's word on them, he fixes me. Oh, fix me. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me. So this collective uh, group of verses, this last few verses here, the second part of this spiritual study guide, not just for the church, but for uh, God's people in the church. The writer says, he starts out and, and then he gets down through it, and I want to start with this particular section first. He says, grace be with you all. Amen. I, I want you to know today that the church operates under a different dispensation. It is no coincidence that the minister stood up here this morning and said that aren't you glad that we 
don't come to a church or don't have to sacrifice lambs and, and, and goats and animals to make atonement for our sin, we, we, we operate under a different dispensation, and that is the dispensation of God's grace. Can we pause right now and just give God some praise right where you are for his grace? I don't know why I get happy when I sing that song. I didn't plan to sing that song, but the song leaders came in and said today, today and said, we want to sing this song. Amen. We have it on our list. I realize my hallelujah belongs to God because had it not been for his grace in my life, where would I be? Somebody knows what I'm talking about. 190 years are proof yes. that the grace of God yeah. in countless believers' lives has stood the test yes. of time. Yes. This church would not still be here yes. had it not been for the grace yes. of God. Yes. Started on a creek with some folks in a little barn type of a building. Moved to just down the street from where we are, rolled it up the street so the story says on logs and was founded here through difficult times in our country. And yet God's all seeing eye and his grace has kept us. So we got a few of his believing children who decided to show up on this gloomy day in October and tell him my hallelujah belongs His grace, church. It's His grace, church. It's His grace, church. I think about His grace and mercy. I get excited. No church is sustained without the grace of God. The church has to get God's grace right. That's important. Understanding what God's grace is, it is God's unmerited favor. Yeah. In the believer's life. So when you look at this text, you see that there is a great benediction in this text. And you might see, well, I see that word on our program. And it's no coincidence that the preacher, the pastor, the worship leader, whoever it may be from church to church, at the end of the service will give a closing prayer and a benediction. A benediction is a, pre a place of pronounced blessing over those who are in the service. In fact, you never, unless there's a special reason, you, have, you don't ever want to leave out of the house of God without a proper benediction. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes they, they, they save it till later as the service is continuing to go, but the benediction is a place that is an, a marked place for a blessing of God to be pronounced over his people. And you might even hear something like this in the benediction. Now may the grace of God be over us. Or now may the grace of God watch over us. Yeah. The sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide over us. You, there's a reason for the benediction. Here, here's the reason. You need blessed. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Somebody in here, I need blessed. Yeah. Somebody in here knows what I'm talking about. I'm trying to move through this, but uh, I've got to pause right here and say it, it, it is because of the blessings of God that I'm even standing here right now. You're able to sit up right on the pew because God blessed you today. You're able to even know who you are and know where you are and, and know whose you are because the Lord opened up a brand bottle of blessings this morning and pour them out on your life. We need a blessing. We need the blessing of Christ. We, we have work to do. We have things to do. We have the will of God to, to follow and the word of God to listen to. And, and, and you need a blessing if nothing else because you live in a wicked world. There are wicked things happening all around you and the, you cannot uh, count and, and understand the amount of times when the enemy has
had his scope on you, but God's hand literally stood between you and the attack of the enemy. I pray every so often and I say, Lord, I thank you for the times that you shielded me from the attacks that I knew were coming. But I thank you even more when I know that you shielded me from some things that I didn't even see that were there. You have a will. The Lord has a will and, and, and we have a will. I need blessed because sometimes my will wants to outweigh his. Yes, Yeah, brother. Yeah, you, you, boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you a mess. That's it. No, I'm talking about you too. We're fellows in the same ship. Sometimes your mindset says, "God, I, I know what your word says, but I, I I've got a different idea. I, I need blessed. I need the Lord to bless me in my life because when it, when He blesses me, many times that points me in the direction that you know what? Had I done it my way, I would have missed out on a Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Y'all can talk back to me. We in this 190 years together, aren't we? Yeah. Amen. We at Paint Creek today. Y'all can talk back to me. Amen. You you look back over your life and, and you said every time I did it my way, I saw I missed out on a blessing of the Lord. Yet he still blessed me in this way. But I could have had this if I would have just simply listened to what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. I'm going somewhere with that. So church, we need blessed because there's several things in the text that we are to do. The spiritual study guide for the church. If you look at verse 16, you will see in verse 16, he says, do not neglect to do good. Wow. Don't neglect it. Don't leave it out. Don't leave it to the side. Do, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. Here we go, Minister Smith. For such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Not only the fruit of the lips, but just simply your giving to somebody else. Those things are pleasing to God. He's saying, don't neglect that. Don't fail or overlook it. This is God's command, and especially since you know that you have the backdrop of his grace working in your life. Why would you not want to give when he's given to you? He says, don't neglect to do good. Church, Paint Creek, Church of the Living God, we are the very extensions of God's grace. Some of y'all are living testimonies to the grace of God. I am a living testimony. Yes. Amen. As he pours it out on us, we then share it with those who are around us. We give our testimony. We tell somebody of the goodness of our God. I don't have time to go into it, but just this past week, a gentleman came into my room. He was down. He received some news that he just wasn't sure about. And so I began to share my testimony that had been my mother's testimony about my birth. And I said, the same God from 1972 is the same God in 2023. I've got a testimony. I've got a testimony. You've got a testimony. So we are to share his word and be an extension of the grace of God. He gives us peace. He gives us his love. He gives us his blessings. He gives us what we don't deserve. Verse 15 says, because of that, back it up just a few, uh, a verse there or so, and it says, we are to offer him the fruit of our lips. Now, please don't be mad at me, but when people stand here and others, and they, they poke, and it seems like they seemingly poke and prod you to open up your mouth, what they are simply doing is asking you to live up to what the word of God says when it says, and they read it in the opening scripture, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise yeah. shall continually, continually, at all times, continually be in my mouth. You are allowed to say, thank you, Jesus. I shouldn't have to bring a spiritual taser out there and say, brother, Say thank you right now. Fruit of our lips. 
is evidence of what's in our heart. Luke 6.38 says, not only the, the fruit of our lips, but what we have. Luke 6.38 says, give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down. Hallelujah. Shaken together, running over. It will be put into your lap, for with the measure you use it, it will be measured back to you. I hear you, Lord. Amen. The Lord blesses and he loves a cheerful giver, not a grudgingly, begrudgingly giver or, or one that, that says, well, man, I know I got this coming up and that. He just simply says, give it, give it, give it to me because you realize that it had, if it had not been for me, you wouldn't have had it in the first place. Yeah. Share what you have. Yes. Pass it on. Yes. And that word communicate means as you do it, uh, you tell others of the goodness, you exemplify of the goodness of God in your life. The text says, y'all read it with me, don't you? God is pleased with his little progression. I'm reminded of a story that a preacher told one time. He says, this little girl uh, who asked the ushers to come by her pew and set the offering plate down on the floor. And then she proceeded to step into the offering plate. And they said, well, what are you doing, young lady? Why did you ask us to do this? And she said, well, in Sunday school, I heard them read the scripture. And they were talking about that you are to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And so I'm, I don't have a lot, but I'm giving myself like the scripture says. She literally took God at his word. What about us? Now I might ask you, we don't have enough offering place for y'all to stand in. And some of y'all feet is too big to fit anyway. <laughs> but are you giving of yourself? Do you give? Do you give? Do you give even when you don't feel like it? Do you stand up and praise the Lord even when you don't feel like it? Do you give even when you don't have it? Do you give your time even when you know your time is short and your list is longer than the amount of time you have, but you still give it. Yes. Yes. I'm talking to you. Amen. Amen. You may think that you even don't have anything to offer, but be reminded, be reminded of this, that even dried up flowers are still of use. For they can be crushed, and the fragrance that is on the inside can, can create potpourri that is used within the house to create a, a sweet aroma. What I'm trying to tell you is you need to present what you have. Amen. Come on, those of you who used to be an ordinary people. Little becomes much when you place it in the master's hands. The Old Testament is full of animal sacrifice, but the New Testament is full of sacrifices, but not blood sacrifices. Jesus made this once and he made it once and for all, yet we are still to offer ourselves. Anything we have is of value. God can use anything you have. How I many of you in here know that? He can use your eyes. He can use your mouths. He can use your resources. You sit there and say, I don't know what I have to offer. I'm not this one. I'm not that one. Stop trying to be this one and that one. Let's take a side detour for just a moment. You're in the body, so therefore, since you've been placed in the body of Christ, God said you are useful. Amen. You don't have to be a head. You don't have to be an eye. You don't have to be a foot. Says you, you can be a pinky. Amen. You can be a nose hair. I don't care. Amen. You can be a navel. But whatever you are in the body of Christ, let the Lord make you useful. There are sacrifices of praise that we all must offer. It, 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 it doesn't bother me, but it makes me think a lot. If we are going to heaven, amen? What are we going to do with heaven? What are we going to do? What's that going to sound like?
Psalms 95 says that we are to oh come let us sing let us bow down before the Lord our maker heaven's going to have a sound we've never heard but that doesn't mean we can't try to at least duplicate some of it on this side I'm going to say it one more time praise him when you don't feel like it Amen. I'm standing up here and I'm praising the Lord. I wanted to jump and I may do it before the end of this sermon. My back went out last night. Amen. Amen. I fell in a ditch in a hole somewhere in the backyard and I, I'm, I'm crooked. Amen. But the Lord propped me up this morning and I'm up here. I don't feel like it, but I'm going to give him the best that I've got. Amen. Sacrifice. What does it mean? It's, it's valued. It's something that you hold of value. You give it up for something that is of more value. I wish I had about two witnesses in here. Something you hold of value. Well, I hold my voice. My voice is precious to me. Offer up that voice to the Lord. Open up your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you today. I thank you. I thank you. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. He's saying, submit yourself in worship. Submit yourself, sacrifice to the Lord. The fruit of your lips, your time, your talents. Simply say in your worship, Lord, I belong to you. That's all it is. It's you. It is a dialogue. Worship is a dialogue between you and the God that you serve, the one who has given you salvation is simply you opening up your mouth and your heart and saying, Lord, I praise you for who you are and for who you are making me into. You are conforming me into the very image of your son. And I don't know what I will look like, but praise God, I don't look like what I used to look like. Verse 17 says as we sacrifice this spiritual study God we must be reminded also again this is the third time and I, I didn't write this book some people say they don't know who wrote it I believe it was Paul but whoever it is this is the third time they have put this in this chapter and in this chapter it says and somebody said oh here we go it says submit it says submit I didn't write it Amen. And I didn't plan to preach it on the church anniversary Sunday. But since we're here, I'm going to read what it says. It says, submit yourselves. It says, obey them that have the rule over you. And submit yourselves for they watch for your souls. Who, who is he talking about? He's talking about at that particular time, the leaders over the church, the pastors, the elders of the church. For us today, it would be the pastor. So he is saying, submit to authority. Yes. Yes. That's a sacrifice. Amen. That, that is something that is not natural in our nature. Look at it. Those words we as humans tend to buck against. Yes. Obey and submit. If you don't believe me, some of y'all have some kids in here, don't you? Y'all, yeah. y'all, I saw, yeah, I saw about two people right back here. Say, uh huh, uh huh. I'm gonna ask you one more time. Y'all have some kids in here, or at least you have dealt with some kids. You got some grandkids, and some of you have found out, or maybe you can just look in the mirror and say, "Yeah, that's me too." You, you are hard headed. You know somebody hard headed, or you know somebody that's gonna be hard headed. Submit. That word meaning to induce. Wow. That's a strong rendering of that word. To induce, to persuade. When a lady is getting ready to give birth to a child, sometimes they have to induce, to mean persuade the child to come forward. Amen. Well, some folks need to be persuaded to submit to what the word of God says. I'm not standing up here telling you to obey me because I'm the pastor and I said so. I'm telling you what the word of God says. And then as I said last week, it's 
up to you to decide if you think it's the truth or not. Submit. That means to be persuaded. You see, the problem is, come on out of here, Brother Adam, and give us a give us a testimony. We are born, we are born, come on, come on, uh, church folks, we, we are born wanting our way. And, 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 and I may add to that, that doesn't change when we're born again. Lord, help us. You're born when you come from your, your physical mother, amen, wanting your way. But when you are saved, when you are born again, that nature does not automatically leave you. You you, you, you got to battle that nature every day. I, I've got to learn, first of all, to submit to God's word, to submit to the Holy Spirit, to submit to those who have watched over my soul. Aren't you glad then that the Lord set you up for success? Amen. When you're saved, he fills you with his precious Holy Spirit. Amen. So this literally is how this looks. The word of God says one thing and your mind and your body says, I ain't doing that. But then the Holy Spirit said, uh, uh, you might want to listen. You need to listen. This is going to be good for you. God has a plan for your life. I hear you, Lord. I hear you. That God has a road that you need to go down. And if you take this detour of the flesh, it's going to cause you this, 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 this. <coughs> problem, problem. So make sure you listen and, and you keep battling with that thing. I know I'm talking to somebody. You keep battling with that thing. And then the, the Lord finally gets you to the point. He, and you say, Lord, I yield. I, 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 Lord, I, I, I surrender. Lord, I, I, I'm going to do what you say to do. I know what I'm talking about. Had I listened to me, I wouldn't be standing where I am right now. Because I said, Lord, I ain't going over there, Lord. I'm perfectly fine right where I am, but I praise God every time I get a chance and I walk in these aisles and I pray on these pews and I pray in this atmosphere, in this church. Lord, thank you for sending me to this church. I'm glad you got me to where I listened to you and I had to submit. Now, I don't know who I'm talking to in here, but if somebody in here is still fighting against the Lord and the Lord has told you, the Lord has impressed on you, the Lord has spoken to you, and you won't say, Uncle, you won't yield, you won't submit, let me remind you, submit to the Lord. It's good for you. It's good for you. You can tell Christ is in a person's life when they are learning daily to move beyond the initial battles of the flesh and they, they live according to how Christ summed it up or what he said, nevertheless, my will, but Lord, your will be done. What he was saying is your will, God, is greater. Your will is perfect. And I'm trusting your will. In that moment, even the Savior in his flesh, amen, as he was looking at what was coming, that was a model of what we need to do. We need to learn to yield to the will of God. So the writer here says God has placed leaders in your church in order for the church to learn to submit to God. Why did the Lord place me here? That's his business. But in the meantime, while I'm here, it is my job to tell you, you better listen to God. Because one of these days, I've got to stand in front of a holy God and explain and give an account for all of you who have been under this pastorate. Some of y'all are sitting there saying, no. I'm thankful that's him and not me. Now, wait a minute. I'm going to have to give an account for you. But you're going to have to give an account for this. Whether you listened or not. Whether you followed it or not. So why pray for them? Why submit to them? They, they are keeping watch. Over your souls. Again, that picture in my office and my desk, it, it reminds me every time I look at it that I many times am just to sit in the pen and watch 
Watch for the enemies. Watch for the wolves. Take you to green pastures. Feed you the best that I can. And I do my best to do that. But at the end of the day, sheep will be sheep. And you've got to listen. You've got to follow. You've got to learn to submit. I'm going to say this, and I mean it with all truth in my heart. However, in light of this text, all across our country, I see videos frequently. I see things popped up and make my heart sad. I want you to know that you need to be thankful, but also pray mightily for our church because... The enemy is busy in churches yes. all across this country. Yes. Amen. Oh, what's he promoting? Is he promoting some new type of... No, he's promoting the same thing he promoted and sold to Adam in the garden. He is promoting disobedience. Yes. That's what he's selling. Yes. He may package it different. He may present it different. But at the end of the day, when you unwrap that thing, when you look at it for what it is... It's disobedience. It is running rampant. Sheep and shepherds are clashing. And the enemy is having a heyday with churches. You see videos pop up all over the place of people fighting in the church. Police intervention coming in. Desecration of the house of God. Chaos is proceeding in many places that have called themselves places of worship. The enemy is promoting a me first spirit rather than a spirit that says, Lord, I submit to you and I know you'll make out of it the best way for me. You will show me which direction to go. We have people who are saying, I don't need to listen. I've got my own way. I'll do it how I want. Thank you, Lord. I stopped by to tell you that that was me. I was over a choir. Coincidentally, the choir in heaven, the, the lead worship leader, guess what his name was? Lucifer. In heaven. He was in charge of God's glory. One day he got too big for his britches. He said, I'll be like God. I'll be above God. Well, I was a choir leader in church. Pastor called me in an office one Wednesday evening. Said, there's some things we need to work on, some things we need to do. And I'm sitting there thinking, I played the piano. You don't play piano. I know what I'm doing. I teach and train this choir. And in my spirit, I got a little bit upset, a little bit agitated. And there was some possibility of friction. And in my heart, I began to think all these different things. Do you know what that was? That was the enemy pushing and prodding me to revolt against what the pastor was saying to me. I'm here to tell you that still happens. You may not voice it, you may not say it, but you might take it home and let that thing canker and fester. Amen. When the Lord is prompting you to submit and say, I have a way better way for you. The enemy about had my mind. Amen. He about caused me to buck leadership. Amen. But here it is. In a place when it should be at an all-time low in the church, we have all-time highs of disobedience. But let it not be said here. Okay. Amen. Let it be said here that God reigns supreme. Amen, somebody. Let it be said here that the Holy Spirit controls the hearts and the minds of not only the pastor, but the parishioners. Those not only in the pulpit, but those in the pew. When there is friction to push back against those leaders and it creates groaning and all sorts of things, that is a hindrance in the house of God. It, it can make the pastor's job one that he does not look forward to. I want you to know I still enjoy pulling up onto this little parking lot, pulling into that little spot and coming in and trying to be pastor over these sheep. I praise God. It is a tremendous and awesome responsibility that for this season he has entrusted me to. I pray that we work together. So how can I submit, Pastor? I come. Isn't that submission? I, 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 I take communion. Isn't that submission? I, I open up the Bible. Isn't that submission? Yeah. Not only open it up, but let it open you up. Amen. Not only study your Bible, but come to Bible study. Yes. Hello, somebody. Yes. Not only let God's words be living and active in your life, but also tell somebody else about how his word is living and active. 
in your life. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the division and soul of spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. God already knows what you think before you think it. And you all, all of us, are going to stand and give an account, and there will be nothing that anybody can hide. Let's just say it this way. We will be exposed before the roving and all-seeing eyes of God. So we might as well get it right on this side. Because if not, he's going to get you right one way or the other on the other side. Well, notice this, and I have given this testimony, and let's move on down through the text. Watch this. When I really begin to see a change in my life and submission is when I really begin to take God's word seriously. And the word of God came uh, through the pastor that he had placed over me. And it wasn't Reverend Freeman that was speaking. When I really got it, it was God who was speaking through Reverend Freeman. Sometimes we tend to attach what God says to us that steps on our feet and attach it to a man. He heard me. He stomped on my foot. Oh, God sent the word. Don't get mad at us. If you're going to get mad, get mad at him. Amen. That changes the whole perspective. I'm not preaching anything to you. I haven't already tried for myself. Amen. 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 Notice this. It makes sense. The evening that I heard the call to Christ right here in this church to be saved, God used a pastor to deliver that word to me. Why would he stop after I get saved? Hello? Hello, somebody. Y'all process that. Come on with me. As he called me out of darkness into his marvelous life, why would God stop speaking to me after I'm saved? Well, how does he speak, preacher? He speaks through the word of God. Why would he stop? So notice this. God loves you enough. Come on, say it. Grace enough that you get to hear his words Every two, three times a week, and God speaks to you continuously through his preached word. Yes. Yes. Fact is, he hasn't stopped. The question is, sometimes we stop listening. Yes. Amen. Let me ask you this way. I'm going I'm to keep on. Yo, 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 I told y'all to talk back to me, so I guess I'll have to talk back to myself. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. If you were drifting in a deep and dark water, an ocean, or sea after your vessel had been wrecked, and, 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 and you see a vessel coming your way, and you're in need of rescue, and someone shines the light on you from the rescue boat, and then they throw you a life preserver. Now, keep in mind, you've been in the water, you are cold, you are sick, you are hungry, you haven't eaten, you're dehydrated, and they throw you this life preserver, and then they you 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 see it there in front of you, but you don't grow, grab hold to it. How would that benefit you? It, it, it wouldn't. But it makes even less sense that if you grab hold to the life preserver and they bring you on board of the ship, and then once you are safe on the deck of the boat, they try to put a blanket around you, try to give you something hot to eat, try to give you some medicine, but you refuse it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Some folks just want the salvation part, and then after that, they say, I'm good to go. I don't need any medicine from God. I don't need any warm blanket from God. I don't need any food from God. I'm saved, and that's good enough. Why would it make any sense to be pulled out of the deep, dark ocean, cold and hurt, but then get on the deck of the boat and be hungry and sick and cold and have the things that can do something for you, but you refuse them? That's what happens when we don't grab hold to the word of God. I'm going to say it this way as I pour my heart out before you. A pastor, a leader that sees people not submitting, it is troubling and it hurts. 
And then we know that that is no advantage to the ecclesia, to the called out ones. It, it is troubling. So, so many times I have thought as the Lord gave me a text, I have prayed over it. I, I said, God, I know this can help them. I know this can help that one. I know this can help these. But then people just choose to go a different direction. And that does concern the heart of the man of God. Somebody say amen. amen. So the key to harmony is unity in the church between the leader and the followers, between the, the shepherd, the under shepherd, and the sheep. Amen? Yes. Amen. And it is possible that joy can reign in a church. Yes. Hello? Yes. Yes. So the last thing he said, and I already pointed out to you, look at what he says. How's this going to happen? Not only through his word, but it's going to take some prayer. Yes. Yes. Pray for us. Well, we can preach that all by ourselves. Pray for us. Pray for me. Look at verses 18 and 19. That's a powerful statement that from this writer, he is showing humility and dependence on the Lord. Lord, I realize it's the prayers of the saints that I need. Pray for us. Now, you got to get this. The early church, some of them were in prison. Some of them have been thrown to the lions. Some of them are being persecuted. Some of them are going through some difficult things. And so here was there a, a phrase that they mentioned and shared between people of the church often. It just simply said it this way one more time. Pray for us. Pray for me while I'm going through it. Pray for me because here's what's going to happen. I'll be praying for you when your turn comes. Leaders, pray. But the church prays also. Yeah. Yeah. So, as folks you say in testimony, <laughs> hour, amen, testimony, testimony time, I didn't mean to add that hour to it, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> Some of y'all get that on the way home. I ask an interest in your Y'all don't remember testimony time, do you? I'm talking to y'all. Do y'all don't remember testimony time? You remember after they were saying, and, and after they got done with the testimony, said, and I ask an interest in your well, what were they saying? What were they asking you? They were asking you to pray. Some of them wouldn't say that. They'd say as they were on their way down to their seat, pray for me and I will pray for you. Y'all know those church phrases, don't you? Well, there's truth in that. In the fact that we have to pray and make it a point to pray for one another. But notice, don't miss this. Don't miss this. It is the timing as well. Notice if this is Paul, and he could very well be in prison, some believe, maybe or no, we know that what he says about Timothy here, coming up, that it, it's possible he has been released, but he's saying, this is what he's saying, the more you pray, I believe that it will it will cause God, or move God, or, or, or create the, a great timing in things that I can be where you are in a certain season. He is saying that the prayers of the saints availeth much. That's what he's saying. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray God's will. Paul is saying, I want to come and see you. I want to come and be in fellowship with you. And I realize it can happen if you all don't pray for me. Can I say it this way? I want to keep preaching. I want to keep sharing God's word with this congregation. But it can't happen like it's supposed to. Souls can't be saved like they're supposed to. Things can't move and fall into place like they're supposed to. If you don't pray for me. If you don't pray for them. Oh, wait a minute. Time out. Uh, time out. I, I, I'm talking about just you, Pastor. No, I'm talking about praying for those that preach. Pray for those that watch over the souls. These guys back here and various ones, they are teaching the word of God in, week in and week out. And we need to pray for them as well. Not just lift me up, but lift up all who share God's word. And God is able. Is he able, church? He's able to open doors that were previously closed. You don't know how many times they have shared something in Sunday school and then the Holy Ghost, because he's the Holy Ghost, 
comes along and has given me a message that further pecked on that or further opened up that door or, or, or moved that, that thing, that burden out of the way. And that person who heard it first in Sunday school, then heard it in the message, their heart was moved and they got saved. You don't know how God is able to take various people and work his message in tandem yes. with them. Yes. Pray for us. So can I ask you a simple question? Do you believe that your prayers make a difference? Yes. Yes. Oh, here we go. Here we go, Sister Dotson. When somebody calls on you to pray, and heads go down, can we get somebody to pray today? Don't look at me. Do you believe your prayers make a difference? Well, Pastor, I can't pray like you. Nobody asked you to. You pray at home, don't you? You pray over your food, don't you? You better. I don't know what folks is making now. We'll get another bit another week. Amen. You pray, right? So prayer is you talking to God. The only thing that changes is when you pray at home or you pray over your food or you pray in your car is that now there's just a few more people around you. But when that happens, I'm asking you, do you believe your prayers matter? Well, Pastor, that's different. That's me praying at home for you. Well, what if I asked you to pray for me right now? What if I couldn't get my mouth open? What if I'm just, something's on me and I just can't. Can I depend on you? Can they depend on you? Can he or she depend on you to pray for us? Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for us. We pick up here where we started. And look at this. In the last few verses, it says, verse 20 and 21, that there the Lord has power to equip these saints for work. The same power that gave life to the dead who made Jesus alive and again has given us power. The one who made an everlasting covenant. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord that cannot be broken. Amen. Are y'all glad about that today? We're in covenant with Christ. And it cannot be broken. It, uh, the writer calls him the great shepherd of the sheep. What is he able to do? And this is the part where you should get happy right here. He is able to make you perfect in the work that he is performing in your life. He, he is perfecting you. He is working on you. Anybody glad this morning, this afternoon, that the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, the one of Psalms 8 has decided to work a work in you. And that which he has begun in you, he is able to perform it. He is able to perfect it until the coming of the Lord. He is able. He is able. He is now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. Amen. He is able. He's able. I'm a witness today that he is able to take something that was nothing and make it into something more. He is able to take those problems and turn them into a, a powerful testimony. He's able, he's able, he's able to take your mess and, and make it into a message. Do you believe he is perfecting you? I'm glad that he decides to work on us. Amen. I'm glad that he decides to work through us. But here's a point you don't want to miss. He can't work on you and he can't work through you until he's worked in you. If you're going to be in covenant with him, you have to be in a relationship with him. So he says, as we consider this, to suffer, verse 22, the word of exhortation. That means as he is working on us, then we are exhorting one another. Amen. That's a spiritual, that's a spiritual direction, church. We are encouraging one another in the Lord. Amen. I've used this example multiple times and I'll use it again today. You've been at a track meet. You've seen the folks stand on the fence coming down the finish line. What are they doing? They're standing there watching the race. There they come. 
There they come. All right, get it. Go, go, go. And some folks are hanging over the fence and some are, are cheering and some folks are snapping pictures and screaming for all these different folks. Come on, come on, Jarrell. Come on, Sabrina. Come on, Lonnie. You can make it. Pick those legs up. Pick those feet up. Amen. Come on, you can go. That is what exhortation is. Means to encourage. It means to stand along with them on the home stretch. And it means that while we are working and while we are running for the Lord, we are pressing, we are praying, we're working harder. But you also with me labor together are pressing and praying and working harder as we see the day approaching. I'm going to ask you one last question and I'm going to get out of your way. Do you see the day approaching? Do you see Jesus is on his way back? What does that make you want to do? Does it make you want to go somewhere and sit down and say, I'm waiting on you, Lord. I'm, I'm waiting on you. Bring me some iced tea while I wait on him. What does that cause you to want to do? What does that cause you? It should cause you to want to get on the track with the rest of the runners and say, I see you running. I know that you're running. I'm running with you. I'm running for the Lord. I won't give up. Even when hard times come, I won't give in. When hard times come, I'm pressing my way. You see, when the saints get to heaven, as the text mentioned, it says we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Chapter 12. Amen. But notice this. Some of those witnesses are not mentioned. I will believe when we get to heaven, we'll see some there that were not mentioned technically in scripture. I believe we will run into some folks that were not mentioned by name in scripture. There were those there that day that as Jesus was going down the road, the Via de la Rosa in Jerusalem, that they were there in the crowd. And though some of them were crying, crucified, and there were some who saw him fall under the weight of the cross. And I have a witness in here. Some who saw him bloody, beaten, and battered, and, and bruised. Some who were there and saw him going through what he was going through. Some who saw him fall under the weight of the cross. And Simon of Cyrene was given his cross. Some who saw him stumble up the hill of Calvary. I believe we'll see some witnesses in glory that says, yes, I saw Jesus. I saw him. I saw him go down the road. I saw him go up to the hill of Calvary. I saw them lay him down on the cross that he had just carried that was already stained with his blood. I saw him die. I saw him hang between the heavens and the earth. I saw him say some words to his father. I heard him say, Father, forgive them. I saw them whip him with a cat and nine tails. And I'm a witness that he died. I'm a witness that he died. I'm a witness that he gave his life for me. I'm a witness that he shed his precious blood. But not only did I see him die, not only did I see him take him, put him in a bar or tomb, but I saw him after he rose up from the grave. And I'm a witness, but I'll say to that person, not only are you a witness, but, but I'm a witness for my Lord. My soul is a witness for my Lord. I will see his nail star hands for myself. I will see him as he is. And when I see him, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to give him the glory. I'm going to lift him up. I'm going to worship him. How about you? How about you? How about you? Praise the name of the Lord in this place. Not only will they be a witness, but I believe we got some witnesses in here that know who Jesus is. Know that he died. Know that you're not the same as you used to be. Know that he has lifted you out of the mari clay. Know that he has placed your feet on a rock to say, do I have any witnesses? for me. Amen. Submit to authority, church. So sacrifice. Open up your mouth and 
Give God some praise. Heaven will not be quiet. We will, we will, we will rejoice. There will be no need of sun in heaven because the sun, S-O-N, he will shine forevermore. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. God be praised in this place. I like praising God with some folks that know what they're talking about. I like praising God with some folks that the Lord has brought you. He delivered you out of the hand of the enemy. Amen. I like praising God with some folks that know what you were and now know who you are in Christ. I like praising God and say, yeah, I was a pimp. I was a pusher. I was a drug addict. I laid down on my back. I did all these things, but the Lord had brought me from a mighty long way. I once was lost, but now I'm back. I once was blind, but now I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. You praise him now while you got the chance. Somebody needs to hear the fruit of your lips. That may be the thing that pushes them and prods them when they see you give God some praise. My testimony is not your testimony. Only you have a testimony. That God has given you. Thank you. Yes. Amen. Yes, Church Hebrews is done. Yes, Lord. The Lord has spoken. Yes. And the Lord has shed his word to us. He has shared his word with us. This These last few months. And uh, over almost a year or so. And here we are at the end. And what does the Bible say at the end of the text? It says amen. 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 Which literally means it is so. So today, as we offer the invitation, do you believe yes. it is so? Yes. You believe what I've said? Yes. You believe what this little old preacher with barely no hair has said? Yes. Screams, hollers, spits, yes. cries. Yes. That brother's crazy. Yes. Why am I crazy? I'm not crazy as you might think. I'm, I'm just happy yes. in Jesus yes. alone. I'm happy in, in Jesus. Hallelujah. Alone. He makes me happy. When I should be crying, he dries my tears. We got some witnesses in here that know, that you know, that you know, that you know, that, you know, that the Lord has saved you. Had it not been for the Lord on your side, where? Would you be, had Calvary not happened, where would you be? God just saved a young man last week. We praise God, but I'm sure there are others. Somebody watching today, or we'll watch later. The Lord's arm is not short. He can reach you right where you are. Anybody a witness of that? He reached way down and saved you. Yeah, 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 Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. He reach down into the mire and found me. Thank you, God. If he can save me. Somebody's got this testimony. He can save you. You're not so lost. Jesus can't save you. Is there one today that says, I surrender, I, I, I yield, I, I submit, Lord. You got me. You got me right where I am. I hear your voice. I'm not going to run any longer. I'm coming right now. Yes. Let me tell you, you coming does not mean you coming down this aisle and bowing at this altar. People have made that into that. That's not what that means. You can do that. But what it does mean is right now in your heart, you know there is no other way of salvation except through the Savior. And you are saying right where you stand, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need saved by your grace, your grace that I don't deserve. You poured it out on me on Calvary. And I trust you right now with my life. I trust you for salvation. Will you save me? And I hear Paul told the Romans, I'm trying to be done, but the Lord is speaking. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. Do you have to be a certain color? No. Jesus' blood is red and covers every skin color. 
Do you have to be a certain way? No. Jesus' blood is red. Do you have to be a certain age? No. Jesus' blood covers all. Yes. Admit you're a sinner. Yes. And he can save you. Yes. Lord, we thank you. Thank you yes. We love you. We give you glory and honor in this place. You have spoken. Now, speak to hearts. Work on lives. Do only that which you can do, Lord. We trust you and give you the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The doors of the church are open. We're looking for a church home. You can come through Christian experience, through the new birth, or through letter. However you come, the Lord is beckoning. And he is calling those and those whom he has already called. They will come. Amen. Amen.